Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Hendwear Home Innovations Limited Q4 FY24 Earnings Conference Call hosted by Yes Securities. As a reminder, all participants line will be in the lesson only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference has been recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Udit Gajiwala from Yes Securities. Thank you and over to you, Mr. Udit. Yes, yeah, thank you, Manuja. Good afternoon and welcome everyone. On behalf of Yes Securities, we invite you to Q4 and FI24 earnings conference call of Hindwell Home Innovations Limited. From the management side, we have Mr. Sudanshu Pokhiai, CEO of Bath Business, Mr. Rajesh Pajnu, CEO of Pipe Business, Mr. Sandeep Sikka, the Group CFO, and Mr. Naveen Malik, CEO and CFO of Hindwell Home Innovations Limited. I would like to hand over the call to the management for your opening remarks, post which we'll open for question and answer session. Thank you and over to you, sir. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Hindwell Home Innovation Limited, quarter four and FI24 earning call. I hope you would have had the opportunity to go through our results presentation shared with you earlier. I will initiate the call by taking you through the overall performance of our, of our company. In FI24, our consumer revenue was rupees 2800 crore and EBITDA set at around rupees 275 crore with margin at 9.8%. During the quarter four, that consumer revenue was rupees 774 crore with EBITDA at rupees 65 crore with margins at 8.4%. The retail business of the company operates in a highly competitive market, especially with the emergence of many online furniture stores. Consequently, the business sales growth and profitability have remained under pressure. Despite diligent efforts over the past year, the retail business has continued to incur losses. The board has decided to discontinue operations of the retail business and approve the sale oblique liquidation of various related assets. Based on a preliminary assessment, the company has made provisions amounting to Rs. 20.30 crore, including an impairment of its investment held in work from private limited of Rs. 9.55 crore. The net impact on the consolidated financial statement amounts to, to Rs. 15.58 crore. The additional impact, if any, of sale public liquidation of assets will be provided as and when finally assets settled. However, the same would not be material in the opinion of the business. We believe that now is the perfect time to leverage our business synergies. Over the last 6 to 12 months, we have conducted internal studies that demonstrate the potential to reduce costs and improve operational efficiency by integrating certain backend functions of our software and consumer appliances businesses. And the same is underway. Now I will request Sudanshu to share an overarching update on consumer appliances and bathroom business. Thank you, Naveen. Uh, good evening and welcome, everyone. Let me start with the bathroom business. Despite the subdued uh, demand environment, which resulted in neutral revenue growth, our EBITDA margins expanded from 13.9% in FY23 to 15.4% in FY24. This expansion occurred even after increased marketing spends on cricket platforms for brand building, such as World Cup and Asia Cup, which were like one-offs in this year. Looking ahead, we further anticipate a further margin expansion of 1 to 2 percent over the next 18 to 24 months. In FI24, our revenue stood at 1580 crores with EBITDA at 244 crores, and in Q4 FI24, revenue amounted to 421 crores with an EBITDA of 65 crores. Customer response to our newly launched products has been very encouraging, with new products contributing to 18% to FI24 revenue. Our networking capital days have also shown improvement, decreasing from 112 days in Q4 FI23 to 105 days in Q4 FI24. Our strategic initiatives reflect our commitment to innovation and delivering value to customers. With diversified offerings, a strong brand, and, ambition, and ambitious expansion plans, we are confident of our continued growth. 
And now I'd like to take you through our consumer appliances business. In FY24, uh, revenue mounted to 422 crores with EBITDA at minus 13 crores. Uh, Q4 FY24 revenue mounted to 108 crores with EBITDA at minus 7 crores. Headwinds, inflation and neutral consumer sentiments have affected profitability. We are undertaking various steps to reduce costs and enhance efficiencies and you'll see the results of the same by Q3 of FY25. We have seen uh, multiple synergies between the CPD and the CPD business uh, in marketing, in customer service, warehousing, logistic, institutional and retail sales and we are working on those to bring uh, significant uh, cost savings for the entire company. Thank you. I will now hand over to Rajesh. So, good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Fuel flow over plastic pipes and fittings brand continues to lead as the fastest growing brand in its sector. Our FY24 revenue amounted to 744 crores, with ETA at rupees 72 crores, and in a beta margin of 9.3%. Our Q4 FI24 revenue amounted to 244 crores with the beta at rupees 26 crores and a beta margin of 10.9%. To enhance our market share, we are diversifying our product portfolio to provide comprehensive plumbing solutions. This includes introducing foam core pipes and inspection chambers very soon. Also manufacturing of PTMT faucets and accessories in this year. Again, the double wall corrugated, that is DWC light lines are in progress and uh, to be commissioned around August or September. With a commitment to ongoing product innovation and development, we currently offer over 2,000 SKUs with numerous additions in the pipeline. We have a network of 300 plus active distributors and over 30,000 dealers ensuring widespread accessibility of our product. In line with our strategic objectives, the construction of our new manufacturing plant in Durki Uttarakhand is on track and will be operational by the end of quarter 3, FI 24-25. That concludes the opening remarks and I would like to ask the moderator to open the floor for the questions and answer session. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and 2. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Chirag Failoke from Ratnatraya Capital. Please go ahead. Hi. Uh, good evening. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, just two questions and I'll get back in the queue. First, for the consumer appliances business, could you give us the gross margins for that business for FI23 and FI24? I, uh, I know you already give us everything else, but for just these two years, is it possible to highlight the gross margins for this business? So the gross margins are in the range of uh, around 28 to 33 percent, uh, which has slightly come off by around 2 3 percent as compared to the last year. Is it possible to give us the number? Uh, is it 33 to 28? Is that what we should take? Uh, basically, we have not been disclosing gross margins separately for this business, so that's why I'm making it a range form. Uh, I'm trying to just get to what kind of uh, you know, operating deleverage did we see because of sales the growth and what kind of uh, actual gross margin compression did we see? Could you tell us just basically what percentage of gross margin compression would have happened in FI24 maybe? If that's easier to answer. Sorry, I, I couldn't uh, hear you properly. Uh, could you just tell us what percentage of gross margin compression happened? So did gross margin compress 100 basis points, 200, 300, just a range of that will be actually useful. So around 3% uh, compression after 2-3%. to Understood. Perfect. And uh, for FI24, could you highlight the pre-index or the adjusted EBITDA margin or just the lease liability for FI24? Uh, you want to see uh, how much was charged for depreciation and interest? Yes. On a console or a standalone business? Console. So I'll get back to you on that. I don't have a fight with me. 
Do you have the standalone number? Sorry. Uh, is the standalone number available? Can I? Is that possible? To... We'll we'll just get Gamma to your backup issue. We'll give this numbers for you. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Arvind Dureja, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. So I just have one question, and it is regarding the consumer appliances business. Uh, now, if I look at the, if I look at this segment, this has been dragging the entire profitability on a console basis. So, can't we uh, spin off this business into a separate entity, or what can be done? Because this has been dragging, you know, the return ratios for a long time. That's it for my side. So, uh, nothing is planned as such uh, to put it in a separate SPV uh, as such. Uh, but the good part about this business is uh, we have made good headways into one or two segments like cooking uh, uh, cooktops and uh, chimneys uh, is one key uh, core area wherein we have performed. So where we are losing is more on the seasonal uh, businesses. So uh, we are trying to rework the strategy uh, with Sudanshu leading the strategy now. Sudanshu uh, uh, would like to add that. Yeah, so uh, I think your question is very valid. Uh, the results have, of course, been dragging the overall consolidated performance of the company. And uh, as a uh, as a consequence of uh, you know an action which has to be taken to improve this performance, we've gone ahead and actually started looking at how we can uh, leverage the strength of the bath business, you know, in in the consumer business. So in the last uh, Three months, we have gone ahead and actually consolidated, uh, for example, our customer service function, uh, which is a very significant uh, cost as well as a very important consumer-facing function uh, for both the, uh, for both bath and consumer divisions. So that's now consolidated. It's bringing us substantial savings as well, and also improving our saving uh, our uh, customer service in the market. We've consolidated our marketing function uh, because the brand which is Consumer facing is also, you know, uh, pretty common in where, you know, we have we use Hindware smart appliances and Hindware channel collection as a leading two brands. So, but the marketing team definitely is, can work very synergistically. Uh, we've also started working around uh, warehousing, logistics. Uh, we started working around institutional sales and even uh, sanitary channels, for example. So, our sanitary channel, of course, sells uh, many products which are the TFR of the consumer division. So we believe that um, uh, these energies will definitely help us in terms of optimizing our costs as well as uh, driving our growth. Uh, and uh, early days right now, we are producing extremely positive momentum because of that. Uh, we, as I mentioned in my opening remarks, I think in uh, you know you will see substantial improvement uh, in the next uh, two quarters. Uh, you know, as a result of uh, some of these actions which you are taking. So uh, just to uh, add to what uh, Sudanshu said, uh, these actions are actually multifold. Uh, one is uh, relating to reduction of manpower costs. So historically, uh, you know, our manpower costs as a percentage of sales has been higher. Uh, with this mechanism, uh, we have taken certain layers off uh, in terms of the support function because we were two separate silos but doing the similar kind of service to the market. And from the customer perspective, the customer was, uh, um, uh, you know, was not having an issue, you know, because both are under the name of brands in there. Or uh, like two separate service centers have emerged into one, uh, no, call centers have emerged into one. Similarly, the, uh, the people who are providing service has been done. So you will see savings going forward on the manpower costs. You will see savings going for, uh, on the savings coming in on account of the operations, as the you said, you know. Uh, so this will lead to, uh, we feel that on manpower and all this together, uh, 1 to 2 percent overall effect uh, on the savings should come uh, in, in the months to come. The participant got disconnected. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Pranav from Omkara Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, sir. Uh, am I audible? The voice is not that clear. It's, uh, it's muffled right now. Is it better now? 
Yes, uh, slightly better. Yeah. Uh, so I just actually wanted to know what is what are we looking forward when it comes to our uh, segments on bathware, consumer, and pipes. How do we see FY twenty four in terms of revenue and margins? And uh, uh, based on our current debt, what what is the movement that we would see going forward as well? So uh, basically, if you see financial year twenty three twenty four uh, has been a year where most of the consumer companies had faced headwinds. Uh, we feel, uh, based on our studies and based on the market environment, that demand should come back uh, once the election is over by the middle of the Q2 of for this financial year. And once the demand comes back, uh, uh, we will like to stick to on the basket business. We had given a guidance that we should be able to grow you know, in the multiples of the market growth ranging around 1.5 times to 1.5 times uh, in terms of the market growth. Let's say the market is growing by around 10%, we should be able to benchmark growth between 13 to 15%. Uh, I would request to Danshu to actually uh, talk more on this, uh, how he feels the market and uh, go more like that. So Pranav, I think what, what, what is happening is that, uh, uh, you know, the real, in the real estate cycle, we have... Uh, uh, you know, the product projects which perhaps would have got launched during COVID uh, would have kind of fructified at this point in time. However, you know, there were hardly any launches during that period of time. So that's why we are seeing a little subdued demand. So what we believe in the organization is that, you know, over a, over a long-term CAGR, the market is, of course, growing at anywhere between 8 to 10 percent. And we maintain our uh, guidance at 1.25 to 1.5 times market. So we continue to maintain that guidance. and. But for a shorter period, when you see this thing, it may look uh, that you know your growth are less. But I think uh, uh, at an overall level, the, we, we maintain this guidance. The positive part of this is, uh, the thing is that you know we've managed to improve our operational efficiencies, and as the growth comes back, with the launches which happened post COVID, we will definitely see uh, you know profitable, healthy growth in our business. That's what we uh, we believe that, and we all already seen that, for example, in our you know, uh, in the cycle, the pipe business, of course, you know, comes before, and you see strong volume growth in those. So that's an indicator that, yes, of course, uh, uh, volumes are, of course, coming back. The volume is a key indicator of the transactions that are happening. So that's what we believe. I think it's a question of time. We believe from quarter to end, quarter two, we should start seeing uh, substantial yeah. coming back again into market. Okay. And sir, on the margin side, what do we see our margins going for FI25? So we have given the guidance in my commentary that we please we can improve our EBITDA margins by 1-2% in the next uh, 18 to 24 months. Uh, we, we maintain uh, same guidance. Okay, uh, and on the pipe side as well, we would be seeing what kind of volume growth and the margins as well. Rajesh, if you can take this, please. Uh, last uh, couple of years, if you see, uh, you can't guide about the value, but definitely volume because uh, the, the raw material prices are at its rock bottom. So the company, so all the industry is being uh, you know uh, configured as far as the volume growth is concerned. So we had a volume growth uh, which we have reported of 15% and we in future also in the next coming year we are uh, assuming that yes definitely we will have a volume growth of the same uh, you know, maybe around 15 to 17% guideline. Then the industry itself has given that volume growth. As far as the beta margins are concerned we have improved a lot in this current financial year and we are expecting to grow by uh, say around 1% more in the next coming year. Okay, okay. And uh, so just one last question on the debt movement. About our, where do we see our debt going forward? Uh, somehow, actually, we have not been able to maintain uh, our uh, guidance on the debt level. So debt yeah. levels have increased. So on a consolidated basis, uh, we have closed the year with a total time debt around 836 crores. And this is costing us around 8.64%. And uh, it has increased uh, as compared to last year because there is an underlying capex going on in terms of a pipe extension. Correct. And also, one of the key things which we are focusing on is uh, the enhancing our brand presence on the streets. So we have invested somewhere around 20 to 25 crores in terms of 
you know, uh, you know, the brand shops which we have opened. These are basically uh, the dealer shops which we uh, do uh, at our expense, but under an arrangement. Uh, so these sort of uh, capexes uh, which we have done, uh, and working capital also, uh, you know, uh, we are also trying to save money there. So, but I think give us a quarter or so. I think we should be coming back with a fresh guidance and how the debt level should come down. So I would request if we, if we can get a time of one or two quarters, we'll, that will be good for us. Okay, sir. So sure. thank you so much. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, you may press star and one to ask a question. The next question is from the line of Udit Gajival from Yes Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> yes, sir. So just a follow-up from the previous participant. First is on the fundraising that you all have taken the board approval for. Could you give some more clarity as to what will be the quantum and the use of those funds for? So board has in principally authorized uh, HHIL to look at alternatives if we can raise more equity given the fact that the total debt level is high. And uh, we would be we are in process now of finding consultants or financial intermediaries, lawyers who can help us on this. Our uh, basis that assessment, uh, you know, and based on the dipstick on the market, uh, we'll go back to the board, uh, I think in the next one or two months. Uh, uh, after which, after the board announcement, only we can make a form. We can make a form, form confirmation to the market as well. But the plan is broadly, you know, we can do some rights or some preferential um, uh, and raise some uh, equity capital. I can't talk about the quantum. Can't talk about uh, anything until unless it is formed by the uh, and approved by the board. Got it. So primarily, it is for repayment of your debt. Firstly. Yeah. Got it. And uh, so what will be the ongoing CAPEX now for, uh, say, FI25? What is the budgeted CAPEX? So uh, we have on, uh, we have ongoing uh, CAPEX on the five and we are setting up a plant in Rukhi, wherein uh, we still have to invest somewhere on energy uh, groups. Thus, uh, apart from this, uh, we we continue to invest into the development of our distribution, and that means development of uh, shops across uh, so we feel a capex of somewhere around 120, 130, 40 crores. That's the range one what we are looking at. Understood. And sir, X of any fundraise, I mean, is there any principle that you would, you know, uh, the plans to repay the debt? If the fundraise is not happening from internal accruals, do you plan to repay any debt on an annual basis? Or it all depends on fundraise right now? As we don't have any subsidiary, all the EBITAs we generate, uh, if you're not doing, if you're not spending on a long-term capex on everything, it ultimately goes for the debt. But give us a quarter or so, I think we should be able to get back with a more firm plan. That uh, once, and we can confirm only once the board uh, has approved. Got it. Got it, sir. And so lastly, on the uh, pipe side, uh, so the plant is starting in Q3 of next fiscal. So by then, do you see any challenges because the quarter, uh, I guess, utilization was in north of 90%. That's kind of unusual in the plastic pipe business. So do you see any capacity constraints uh, in the near term? Rajesh. We are on end of the quarter. So we will we'll get uh, one full quarter to utilize the capacity which we are installing at the initial stage. Hello? Hello? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, I'm audible. Okay. So we'll be, we'll be utilizing those capacities for the full quarter, which we'll be uh, installing uh, during our commissioning. In future also, we have the option to increase our uh, capacity there because we are making the complete plant, but we are not installing all the machines. We are seeing a good guidance booth as far as volume is concerned. The only uh, challenge is the value. Once the raw material goes up, then value growth will also be there. But volumes are always there in this industry. Understood. And sir, on CV, CPVC pricing front, could you highlight that uh, have the prices bottom up or what's your view on the same for this? Period? CPVC prices are stagnant for the last two years. They are neither going up nor going down. It's only a little bit of competition that has happened. But we are expecting that Q2 uh, of this financial year, there will be a pickup, as Sudhan Shudha rightly said, 
all these uh, people are just waiting june all these projects which are going to start uh, which are there uh, on the table which have got uh, you know launched the projects have got launched nationwide they need cpvc and we are offering uh, almost all the projects of the country you now but it is the kick start of the project once that happens pipes will be the first thing after the structure will go there so we are seeing in the end of by the end of q2 there will be a shift for cpvc demand in the country you know let's thank you for answering thank you thank you thank you the next question is from the line of nikhil gada from abagus amc please go ahead uh, uh, yeah hi uh, thanks for the opportunity uh, nikhil and, sir can you be quite loud yeah uh, is it audible now yes please heard nikhil yeah, yeah. Uh, hi so uh, first of all congratulations on uh, a uh, decent set of numbers in a week environment and also uh, one of the regarding the retail business so that is now behind uh, so just uh, firstly on the uh, the bathware business uh, if you can highlight uh, just need some numbers uh, how is the the mix looking uh, like in fy24 versus fy23 and how much uh, the dependency on china has reduced okay. what was the first question i couldn't get it so the the mix in sanitary wear and faucets in terms of uh, uh, premium versus uh, uh, economy whether it is fy23 okay i think so much we need first talk about uh, china yeah so this uh, hi nikhil and nikhil just we kind of get the numbers for the first question so for the china thing uh, i for lots of good news here in fact what we have been able to achieve is uh, you know from a a uh, very 20 odd percent contribution about a year ago we were reduced to 7 8 percent in this year and in fy 25 we are uh, basically plan of 3 percent uh, which is actually a, a, a far lower number on you know in terms of china imports but dependence on china has actually come down substantially and in addition to that uh, you know we have also been able to in source a lot of our uh, uh, production into within our plant so we also not just see production from china we also see or uh, insourcing into our own plant uh, in both sanitary and faucet plants so we've been able to achieve uh, you know this objective uh, you know in, in last few months and uh, the impact of that is seen at uh, fy25 so that both these numbers are now very very positive as far as uh, uh, overall number is concerned in terms of premium and uh uh the uh, second uh, entry level and so for us for us uh, uh, 46% of our business is basically at the uh, what we call the economy level and the premium level is basically uh, about uh, the balance 50 54 or percent so that's our number for uh, entry wear and in faucet uh, wear the way we see our numbers uh, about 45% of our business is at the premium level while 55% is basically at the economy level so on a combination basis if i see uh, our uh, uh, economy level products are basically at about 49% and about uh, nearly 51 or percent is at premium the way we define our business uh, so and uh, would it be possible to give the same number for fy23 as well how much that has changed yeah yeah so i'll just give that to you so give me a minute and also if it's possible the in source production uh, number if you can give how much we are doing in sourcing versus outsourced in fy24 and how much that number was in fy23 yeah so for us the the change, there is a bit of a change in terms of contribution in our uh, uh, entry level or economy level versus premium level the basically in fy20 we were at about 45% on economy level which is 49 this year so of course there is a reduction in our entry level uh, in our premium uh, level in terms of percentage from 49 uh, 40 uh, say 51 to uh, 55 to 51% on the premium side okay as far as uh, manufacturer is concerned we are in fy24 Just a second, huh? Yeah. In FY23, we were at 63% uh, 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 manufactured. In FY24, we were uh, six, uh, 60% manufactured. So 3% reduction. 
Yes, yeah, because we had announced uh, in the previous uh, investor call that we were making these changes uh, with our manufacturing setup, and uh, we had increased our outsourcing. But all those changes have happened now. We expect this to decrease to nearly 75-80% uh, uh, in, in sourcing in factory, where in FY25. Okay. In, in faucets are in source. Uh, uh, just a second. Yeah, this is it. Okay. The manufactured is uh, uh, our own manufacturer is only 34%, mm -hmm. while 67% is outsourced in FY24. And in FY25, this is expected to be about, you know, anywhere between 35 to 80% insourced and 20% outsourced. So it's going to be a substantial increase from 33, 34 to uh, nearly 75, 80%. Okay, so sir, just on this numbers, uh, two things. So firstly, if uh, we are going to see such an increase in uh, in-house manufacturing, uh, uh, and I'm sure that the premium number which has gone down will also be uh, uh, sort of lifted up because of the way we are going to do in-house manufacturing. Uh, don't you think this margin uh, expansion number that you're talking about, uh, you know, uh, 100 bips, uh, is it not a bit on the lower side, or do you think that... Uh, uh, we are going to do more ad spends, uh, so from that perspective, we are just guiding for this kind of uh, margin expansion. No, I think mean, we've been maintaining, uh, you know, the guidance from, you know, from the previous year as well. And I, I mean, you can call us conservative. I, I agree with you. But yes, uh, you know, I, I would stick to the same guidance as this point. In time. So allow us to perform first, and then we'll get back. Yeah. We'll wait for a few quarters. Mm -hmm. Got it. Uh, uh, and just uh, 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 last question on the sanitary wear and faucets. Uh, while we have seen a substantial uh, decline, uh, you know, uh, in China uh, procurement, uh, the same is not visible in the working capital cycle. Uh, uh, do we think that uh, uh, you know this will be more sort of uh, we'll see a significant reduction in FY25? Yeah. So on the working capital side, uh, there is a bit of a impact around the receivables because of the slowness of the market. Um, you know, the way that project is structured in terms of some payment being generally uh, delayed in the market. Uh, they, 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 uh, the ongoing elections which are happening in the market. I think it's a short-term phenomena. I think uh, I'm not I'm, I'm not uh, too bothered by that at this point in time in terms of you know, as a as a structural shift which is happening in our uh, in our uh, capital, our inventories have come down, and they will continue to come down. Uh, uh, if if my China thing had actually substantially uh, been erased, then it would have actually shown in my in my inventory in this year itself. What our China contribution in our sales has come down, but our inventory is still lying. That basically is the result because of which we see some bit of uh, higher working capital and especially because of the uh, receivables. I think on both those aspects, uh, we will see, because we are at about 7-8% even now in terms of our uh, China contribution. That inventory is actually coming down for us. And uh, in my view, uh, uh, when I come down to 2 to 3% in terms of the total contribution of China, uh, Chinese imports in my business, uh, then the full reflection of that will come in mind. Right? So any number you can guide on this, uh, or is it uh, as of now too difficult to sort of uh, capture this? On the, on the working capital? Yes. I think so we, uh, we, we have to at 80 days or 90 days of working capital, yeah. Based on 31st March 24, we have internal targets ranging around 10 to 15% uh, reduction over next year. Okay, got it, sir. So then on just on the pipes business, uh, uh, would it be possible to give a mix uh, for FY24 versus FY23 across CPVC, PVC? Rajesh, if you can take this, please. Nikhil is here. Please come again. Uh, sir, a uh, mix between CPVC, PVC, uh, you know, HWR column pipes hmm. for FY24 versus FY23. Ah, the mix is like, uh, since there is a volume growth, uh, so uh, it has all happened in non-CPVC. We can't guide uh, for product pipes, but we say 
benchmark that PVC and non uh, PVC, that is CPVC. The growth in, uh, in terms of percentage was there in non CPVC. Because CPVC is stagnant, as I earlier said, for the last one and a half year. And it has been PVC which has been driven by the demand of JJM, you know, Jal Jeevan Mission, Hargar Jal, and all other projects. So the PVC demand has gone up, and the percentage of PVC has gone up than the percentage of CPVC. Uh, got it. Is it would it be fair to say that uh, CPVC growth was flat volume? Year yes, year? CPVC growth is flat uh, throughout the industry. We are presuming, as I said earlier, that Q2 uh, last Q2 onwards. We believe that all projects should take up and CPVC uh, would pick up again because last 20 years, this is the first year that CPVC has not grown for the industry. And sir, uh, in that same context, is it possible to give mix between housing, I know agri we've just entered, but housing, agri, infra, yeah. what kind of picks we have currently? As I said, we, we are giving the guidelines because we have been that, that uh, our quantum of our CPVC has to be around 45%. And we have touched that the, day, the year before this, but this year it is only 40%. So the next year, the target would be that out our, of our, our, our all products mix, CPVC has to be there at 45%. So the housing demand should come up, uh, say, last half of this year. No, so I, I understand that we might also be selling PVC for housing as well, right? So from that hmm. perspective. How much See, PVC have... is proportionately, uh, PVC in the housing segment is proportionally to the demand of uh, CPVC basically. Is the plumbing and sanitation which goes hand in hand. So whatever we have been able to do last quarter, if you see our results, the results are very good because we changed our focus from uh, housing to a little bit of agri because we were not there. Still we are not doing SDP, MDP, DWC because we are not into that segment. But we have done well. <clears throat> we believe that it should... Uh, to have a better bottom line, the quantum of CPVC or plumbing has to go up. Sir, uh, so I'll just ask it in a different way. What kind of a mix you're targeting in FY25 between housing, agri, infra? Because you're going to get into DWC as well as... Uh... See, uh, the, uh, house, actually, if you see, Nikhil, 90% of our sales goes to housing only. Correct. As of today. Correct. So, and 10% is to, this year, 10% is to uh, the other market, which we say agri market, or even we can say that it is like layouts and all other markets. Correct. So we are presuming since we are installing more capacities by the year end in Roodki also, so this mix may grow also, but parallelly CPVC has to grow. So it all depends if your uh, production volumes go up, that is your capacity goes up, you can have a mix of 80-20. Mm -hmm. That will give you a good, better bottom line and a top line. Uh, got it, uh, got it, sir. Uh, and uh, uh, sir, uh, just uh, from the perspective of, uh, you know, once the Roodki plant starts, uh, from third quarter onwards, uh, what kind of uh, uh, savings do we see in this uh, entire logistics and uh, you know from an operational perspective as well? Uh, see, we... uh, Nikhil, more of a saving. If you you know this industry, this industry is because freight is a very uh, uh, very freight sensitive. The product pipes, mm -hmm. so we have to be there very near to the market manufacturing pipes. Uh, it is not that uh, we are. Uh, one, we'll be saving on freight. Second is that you need to be, uh, because in this, you don't get a lead time in this type of business. Mm -hmm. So transporting the pipes from here to north and then to their, to our depot and then somewhere else, we need to have manufacturing bases around the country. That is why if you see all these, our competitors are, are operating with multiple plant locations. So this will be our second plant. And we'll not stop here. We have to grow. So that is a big saving that you will, you will, be, you will be trying to increase your top line. No, so my, this, my, is not my question, from, this is not possible from a single plant. Yeah, so, so my question was from a perspective that the moment our plant starts, uh, uh, do we expect in next couple of quarters to reach this, uh, uh, you know, 70, 80, 90 percent sort of a utilization uh, uh, based on the demand that we have in our uh, overall share that we have in North Yeah, North of North. course. That is the reason we are putting up. Because already this plant, we are in the industry, we are, we are having the maximum capacity utilization from this Hyderabad plant. So we are operating at around average of 78 percent, which nobody does. So that is why there is a demand, but supplying PVC pipe from here to that portion will never be feasible. It's only CPVC. So we will be operating and uh, there by manufacturing all these pipes. Hmm. These pipes, what will happen is fittings, this will remain as a mother plant. You transport the fittings, fittings doesn't have a freight cost, and you sell more. Hmm. Uh, 
got it, Sacha. Just one last question, if I can. Uh, you mentioned that in the consumer business, this is. Uh, you mentioned there will be a one to two percent uh, benefit. Uh, uh, because of all the actions that you are planning to take, uh, this will uh, this you are saying in terms of uh, uh, margins, right? That we will straight away see that reflect our margins. Yes, yes. Uh, and so, in consumer business, since we were rationalizing and have been rationalizing, uh, we have seen a degrowth as well. Uh, you know, in our business, uh, definitely there has also been a weak demand as well. Do we see this business grow, going down further because of some more rationalization or from here do we see growth coming back in this uh, 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 sort of segment? No, uh, I would be able to answer this question far more uh, clearly in, in the next in just a week, but yes, we see growth coming back uh, strongly in this. Okay, fair enough. And so lastly, any, uh, any part is remaining for the retail business that we have to take in the numbers? In, Provision. So, um, based on the assessment of all the assets uh, we have already provided, uh, and we are in process of selling inventories, you know, uh, now since the business is closed, uh, although we have done a study what we should be able to realize, if there is anything, you know, upon the final realizability, that will come to the opinion, but predominantly I think almost 90% plus uh, uh, ideal basis we have provided. Maybe. Uh, you know, there can be some saving little bit or some charge depending, you know, how we are able to. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Raghati from Kamikya Wealth Management. Please go ahead. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you for the opportunity. So I could see that the inventory days are reduced from 283 to 141. So what are the targets for effort 95 in order to release our inventory days? Your voice is not clear to us. You have to repeat. Okay. Uh, sir, your inventory days has reduced from uh, 283 days to 141. Uh, what are our internal targets to reduce it further for FY25? Inventory days? Yeah. Uh, which business? Uh, you're talking consolidated business? Consolidated, yes. Okay. So uh, we have given a target that uh, whatever we are there on 31st March 2024, uh, our internal benchmark target is to further optimize uh, ranging around 15% over, over next one year on this. Got it, sir. And so uh, this consumer business, uh, you know, any plan for this to digest or uh, because the business is not uh, adding up in terms of uh, margin because the Manufacturing uh, assets margin increase, getting camouflaged by the appliances businesses. Wanted to understand your view for the consumer business. We can't get your question clearly to be very frank. Basically, I wanted to understand that like, uh, when can we expect the revival in the consumer business? Because we, uh, the, there is no addition in terms of uh, margins or even the growth has been flat over the years. So, what is your view on that? So I think uh, this Ranchu and uh, so we, uh, as we shared, uh, we have done a lot of work around uh, cost optimization so that this business becomes profitable. We discussed that, we shared how we are trying to build in synergy between our consumer business along with our bath business. So uh, we, like we said, there will be a lot of optimization which has happened on the manpower cost, operational cost like warehousing, logistics. Uh, and of course on marketing side. So these three optimizations uh, we believe is going to really add our, into our profitability of the business. Uh, as far as uh, revenue is concerned, uh, we've seen a decline, but of course like uh, everybody uh, you know, has seen, the economy overall has been, like, we're in a slow, uh, slow growth uh, situation at this point in time. Uh, we believe that uh, we would be going, uh, you know, we will be coming back into growth in consumer business in the coming, uh, in the coming quarters, uh, I won't be able to give you a you know a very clear indicative number around that right now. But uh, you know we'll of course come back with a commentary on consumer business in the next quarter. So your your concerns are valid, but I think uh, uh, we have shared plans for the consumer business both on the revenue side as well as on the profitability side, which will we believe will uh, show a turnaround in the consumer business in in the next one to two quarters itself. 
is there any plans in order to value unlock the building product business uh, like uh, you know divesting the consumer business into other uh, company as such nothing as such uh, nothing is proposed nothing approved by the board in this regard fine sir thank you thank you the next follow up question is from the line of chirag saloke from ratnataya capital please go ahead hi thank you for the for the opportunity again uh, just a clarification uh, on the discussion that has been going on the consumer appliances business so just to be clear your guidance is right now in fy25 we'll probably still see an ebitda loss right because we are at a 3 or percent loss which will probably 100 basis point improvement will still get us to a 200 basis point loss or a marginal loss is that is that the right way to think about it it's difficult for us to make any guidance for the current financial year and that's not our practice and policies but we feel that uh, uh, we are trying to grow this business uh, uh, we are trying to optimize the costs which are relating to this business uh, you will see the growth happening in this business and as the growth happens with the healthy margins uh, i think uh, in next few four years we should be touching somewhere around 8 to 10% but it's very difficult for us to advise you or you know guide you or give any guidance on fy25 numbers understood uh, fair enough and from a top management perspective could you just help us understand on the internal team and uh, uh, so give me if this question is not you know coming out correct but there's been a decent amount of attrition change however you want to put it on the top management also uh, would love a couple of comments on that on what is evolving in the team and what has transpired in the last 12 to 18 months so uh, basically not much changes uh, but optically you will see that happening more on the consumer product side so you have to go into the history of this if you see we incubated this business around 8 9 years back and the philosophy which we worked on it was that uh, we incubate uh, silos uh, what you call that uh, creating verticals uh, and uh, that vertical should be totally focusing on the growth but as a result of this uh, there is an increased manpower cost which has a lot of impact on the overall margins and and the investor perception uh, we have been analyzing uh, over the last 12 months that how we optimize our uh, manpower cost so one of the uh, very good idea which came was that there are certain functions like brand handwear marketing you know like uh it's better that uh, bathware and consumer products go together from us from the consumer perspective it is one consumer doesn't make a distinction between the two companies or the two separate ways so we have consolidated that uh, we have consolidated uh, the official service we have got consolidated the call center we have consolidated when i say consolidated means the process has started uh, the full impact will come through uh, in a manner uh warehousing we have uh, even some part of the procurement has been consolidated uh, when we do the shops here in the market even that consolidation happen or uh, most of these decisions have been taken uh, somewhere in the month of february march uh the impact of this uh, you would see going uh, forward uh, so uh, this uh, this is one key element and apart from this sudanshu has already spoken about uh, you know that once this both businesses are together there are sort lot of synergies uh, you know of a cross sell uh, when a customer is trying to uh, come to a, a counter let's say on the on the bathware side we have let's say x number of counters and the customer is coming uh, the those dealerships can make a soft approach to the customer in terms of you know offering chimneys and other products which are otherwise customer keeps looking in the market and can get the conversion done similarly vice versa So a lot of synergies uh, we are seeing there, and uh, given the uh, the fact that there is a uh, there is a base factor now on the both kitchen chimney shops, and also on the on the bathware business which has been growing. So the whole effort of the management changes which we are seeing are, are relating to that. So Sudanshu is now spearheading the entire process, or uh, you know, strategic providing strategic inputs that how the CPD integration happens into the overall. uh uh you know the uh, the 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 uh, what you call that the stronger points we have on the bottom part business and how we can totally upscale the business uh, considering both the businesses together the respective turnovers uh, the respective products definitely when i'm saying this it doesn't mean that we'll start selling uh, kitchen chimneys in handwear 
but uh, respective companies will have their own, uh, you know, respective emails as it is moving uh, in, the, in the current, uh, as, as it is being shown right now. But there is a synergy, and that synergy is, is being, you know, um, 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 unveiled now. Understood. Fair enough. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank you. As there are no further questions, I will now like to hand the conference over to the management for closing comment. Over to you, sir. Well, thank you very much. Uh, on behalf of uh, India Home Innovation Limited, I'd like to thank all of you who joined the call today. I hope uh, we have been able to answer most of your questions which have been asked. Uh, if any still uh, left out, we'll be very happy to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you. On behalf of Yes Securities, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.